Now, in our last message, we looked at a parallel passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 34 and 35. And in that passage, we found that Paul prohibits women in the assembly of the church from speaking in languages and interpretation and also from expressing the gift of prophecy. He says, let the women keep silence in the churches. So we learn then from 1 Corinthians 14, when the church comes together, women were not to speak in tongues when tongues were a valid gift. They were not to engage in the public interpretation, and they were not to be involved in the prophesying. Here we add to that that they were not to be ruling in the church, and they were not to be the preacher-teacher. Furthermore, we learn from verse 8 that women were not to lead the congregation in prayer, but the congregation was to be led in prayer by men. That's why Paul says in verse 8, using bulamai, which is the will of command, I command therefore that definite article, the men pray everywhere. So when it comes to the worship of the church, the praying, the teaching, the speaking for God, and the preaching is to be done by the men. Now, we noted last time that that does not mean women cannot pray. We saw, you remember, many women, including Mary, the mother of our Lord, in Acts 1, 12 to 14, gathered with all of the men disciples, and they were in a very long prayer meeting together. There is a time and a place when women ought to pray together with men. It does not mean that women cannot teach the Word of God to children or other women. It does not mean they cannot speak out for God the gospel of Jesus Christ on every occasion that they are given. It does not mean that they cannot contribute in a Sunday school class or in a Bible study or in a home fellowship meeting. What it is saying is that in the duly constituted worship and service of the church, there is to be a clear line of distinction between the role of men and women that God wants established as His pattern, and that is that men do the leading and the teaching and the praying and the preaching, and women learn in silence with all subjection. That is why, beloved, there are no women apostles in the New Testament. There are no women prophets in the church. One prophetess named Anna is mentioned. She was prior to the church and functioned in a unique way, speaking to individual people about the coming Messiah. But there is no prophet in the New Testament church who is a woman. There is no woman pastor, there is no woman teacher, there is no woman evangelist, and no woman has written any book of the Bible. Now, that is an affirming thing to indicate God's divine order. And this is an issue of role, not spiritual inequality, as we saw last time. Now, the affirmative statement of verse 11, let the women learn in silence with all subjection, is given a clarifying and supporting counterpart in verse 12. Let's look at it. But I permit not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. And all the verbs in that verse are present, and that means they have a sort of a continuing idea. I am not allowing a woman to be engaged in teaching or to be taking authority over the man, but to be continually in silence. In other words, all of those present indicatives indicate that this is a continual commitment Uh, on the part of Paul through the Holy Spirit. Now, notice that in verse 11, let the women learn in silence, and at the end of verse 12, but to be in silence. So silence here is the issue before and after. This brackets the section and thus contains the main idea. They cannot exercise the office of teacher and ruler in the church because that is inconsistent with their God-given design. Their God-given design. The issue then is not the way in which women rule. It is not the way in which they teach, as some would have us to believe that they're not to teach in a, in a domineering way. It is that they would teach or rule at all. That is the issue. So women who don't lead in the public prayer of the church in verse 8 also don't teach, also don't give rulership over the church, also don't lead in public display of gifts as in the early church in prophecy and tongues and so forth. So you get the picture. Now, you say, well, does this wipe out all of our instruction? No. Do you remember Acts 18 where Aquila and Priscilla instructed Apollos? There's a time and a place where women are to be instructing others. And there may even be a time and a place where a woman and her husband could instruct another man, even a man who was a preacher. But it wouldn't be in the public worship and service of the church. 